How's it going? In this video, we'll be tearing down and repairing an original Apple HomePod that no longer powers on. The tools we'll be using for this are a T6 Torx screwdriver, a large flathead screwdriver, and a spudger. For the board level repairs, we'll be using our Amazon Special Hot Air Rework Station. Let's get started. I've noticed now that 12 out of the 13 HomePods that I've repaired with this same no power issue have all been caused by the same failed component on the amplifier board, specifically a 60 volt 5 amp shock key barrier diode. The symptoms on these HomePods have all presented the same, where they've shown a few watts of power from the wall, but they don't respond to anything. And if you leave it plugged in for a while, you'll actually feel this area of the HomePod start to warm up a little bit. The 13th instance that I've seen of this has been a completely failed amplifier IC. In that case, I did see power still being pulled, but the HomePod wasn't getting warm. And I heard a loud pop sound every time I would plug it in or unplug it. So with that all said, let's go ahead and unplug our HomePod and get the power cable removed and set that to the side. Then we'll get our spudger and let's go ahead and remove that top touch cover. Once you've gone around that, you should be able to pull this right off. Next, we've got a couple of screws here to take out. Let's go ahead and take those four screws out now. Now that we've got that off, we need to take our spudger tool and insert it in between this top layer and this outer plastic frame. So we're gonna stick it right in between there. And we're gonna try to get all the way underneath this PCB and lift it up. All right. Now that we've got that in there, I wanna show you really quick what you want to avoid. This layer that we're pulling up is actually two layers. There's this plastic layer, and this plastic layer is actually adhered to the PCB for the touch and display. So what you wanna avoid is getting your pry tool under here and pulling up just this plastic layer. You wanna make sure that you get your tool underneath both that plastic and the PCB. When you're working your way around this layer, be sure you don't stick your pry tool in too far either, so you can avoid that ribbon cable that'll be underneath. Once we've worked our way around that, we should be able to lift this up. And then we can take our fingernail or our pry tool and disconnect this ribbon cable. We can set this to the side. Okay. Now we've got these four screws holding this top plastic frame on here. And we've also got these two screws holding the drawstrings tight once we take out these four screws and these two screws, we'll be able to take this top plastic frame out and then slide our mesh down. So let's do that. Okay, we've got those screws removed. We can simply take this and sort of finagle it out of this and then we can see our drawstrings here so we'll take our screwdriver and just 
sort of facilitate these off their posts out of this plastic frame, and then we can set this aside. And now with that all freed up, we can take our mesh and pull this down. Okay. At this point, if for whatever reason you wanted to fully remove your mesh cover, you can do that. You would want to remove this bottom rubber foot. You just grab it and rip it off. And then there will be three T5 Torx screws. And once you remove those, the rest of this mesh should be able to just pop right off and you can do whatever you want with that. For this video, we'll go ahead and just leave that on. So we've got our main logic board here. We'll go ahead and flip this upside down and lift this retaining lock up. And we can just remove that. If you have issues like boot loops or flashing volume buttons, this is most likely the component that you will want to replace to resolve that. So we'll put that to the side. Now we have these rubber covers that we need to remove to reveal the screws underneath. So we'll go ahead and remove these rubber pieces and remove those screws. Okay, now that we've got all those screws removed, we will want to take this ribbon cable here and just get it removed from this top basket to avoid getting it ripped when we pry this basket off. Just like so. All right, and you can see that's now pulled down from the top of the basket. So now we can proceed with our flathead screwdriver. If you want, you can cover the tip of this with some electrical tape. And the idea behind that is when we go and stick this in here and start prying the top basket layer off, uh, it's supposed to prevent some, uh, some scratching on the parts in here. However, you won't see any of these scratches once you have it all back together, and it doesn't have any effect on the seal or performance of the HomePod whatsoever, so I just don't bother with that. What we'll do is take our flathead and stick it as far back in between this top basket and the subwoofer basket as we can as far in there as we can and then we can t use that to sort of twist and then repeat you want to go around the whole perimeter twisting and using that leverage to sort of get the basket loose and once we get this apart it'll be a little easier for me to show you exactly how we're doing this And there you go. 
So essentially what we were doing <clears throat> is we took our flathead and we stuck it as far into here as possible. And then we used a twisting motion to separate this layer from the bottom. And then we ran around the whole perimeter and did that until it was loose enough for us to just rip this whole thing off. Too easy. So now that we've got the most difficult part out of the way, let's go ahead and remove the subwoofer. Okay, once we've got all of our subwoofer screws removed, we'll want to be mindful of the rubber grommets before we pull this up, and also be mindful of the ribbon cable here, so as we lift this up, we can go ahead and fish this through. And then we can go ahead, start lifting this out, and then we can unplug our subwoofer You can see the here, to unplug that, there's just a single tab that you have to squeeze and pull up. So we'll put that to the side. Now let's go ahead and push this rubber grommet through the plastic ring here and get the ribbon cable pulled through this. And let's go ahead and take these screws out so we can get these plastic rings out. screws loose we can pull this straight up and out and then we can take our inner plastic ring here and screw it counterclockwise to pull that out now we've got our first good look inside so next let's go ahead and remove the four screws for the power supply Okay, to remove this power supply board, you don't wanna just yank it out. You're gonna to want to lift this up as straight as possible because there's a connector underneath the power supply board that connects it to the amplifier board that you won't see until we get this out. And it is, uh, it's really fragile. So you don't wanna lift this up at an angle until you feel that you've gotten that disconnected underneath. So, We'll go ahead and try to grab this from all four corners and just try to lift that straight up. And we heard that, so that means that we are now free. We can go ahead and rotate this, unplug its cable, and if we flip this over, we can see what we're talking about here with that connector underneath. So you wanna make sure you lift this straight up and get that fully unplugged before you just yank that at an angle. All right. Lastly, we're going to want to take out all the screws in the amplifier board before we actually fully remove the amplifier board. There is this connector for this ribbon cable and it's a little odd. Um, it looks like the down position is open, but it is in fact locked. So to unlock this, we're going to push this connector up and then we can pull our cable out.
Okay, we've got all the screws taken off our amp board. We can go ahead and lift this up and out. And so as I was saying earlier, my suspect, like most others, is probably a shorted diode. So we'll grab our multimeter here. And what we're going to do is stick this in continuity test mode. So that way, if there's any sort of short, and we're going to test this diode right here. We're gonna see if that one's shorted. And we appear to be shorted entirely on that diode. So what we'll do is go ahead and break out the soldering tools and pull this diode off the board and then double check with the diode off the board that it is still shorting out uh, because we want to make sure that the diode itself is actually shorted and not something else on the board that is making the diode appear to be shorted. got that diode pulled off the board here. So we're just going to check really quick with our multimeter again. Yeah. Shorted as fuck. So let's go ahead and grab a new diode, pop that on the board, throw this thing back together and see if we've got another working home pod. All right, to put this back together, we'll essentially just follow reverse order. Let's go ahead and find our ribbon connector here and use that to orient ourselves on the inside before putting this in. We'll go ahead and reconnect that ribbon cable. and then we can push that locking mechanism down to retain it. Let's go ahead and put the screws for the amplifier board back in now.
got our amplifier fully screwed in. Let's go ahead and take our power supply, plug that back in. And then we can use the screw holes to nicely line this up. We don't want to just smush it down yet. But once we see that we've got our power supply lined up, we want to feel for it. We can then push that into place. And we can take our power supply screws and screw that down. Right, we've got our power supply screwed in now. Let's go ahead and take our bottom plastic ring. Let's locate the notch on the inside and we're going to place that lined up with the ribbon cable and then we're going to turn this counterclockwise 45 degrees or sorry 90 degrees until we hear it snap down a little bit. And then we're going to rotate this clockwise until this notch realigns with the ribbon cable. And if you've done this right, you should be able to spin this plastic ring more clockwise only about like until it binds up. So you know you've got this oriented correctly. Go ahead and back that off a little bit until it lines back up with the ribbon cable again. Next, we're going to take our top plastic ring. And before we put this in here, we're going to want to take the rubber grommet off of our ribbon cable here. And then we can feed our ribbon cable through our notch here. And then the tricky part is making sure that that bottom ring stays lined up with your ribbon cable and that this top ring and all of its screws line up with the screw holes in the bottom ring. So we'll use the ribbon cable as sort of reference to make this lined up before we push this down. And then we can check and see if our screws lined up. Here we go. And we can go ahead and screw this down. Then we'll take that rubber grommet for our ribbon cable. And if you forgot, it's wider on the top and narrower on the bottom. So you want to orient it with the wider side on top. Go ahead and fish the ribbon cable through this. And then we can easily reinsert this into its slot. And then we can see there's two lines on the ribbon cable here. We're essentially going to want to pull this up until those two lines are inside of the rubber grommet. Just like that. All right. Now we can take our subwoofer, again being mindful of our rubber grommets on the side here, they like to, they like to pop off. There's this foam ring here, you can now see, it likes to stick to the subwoofer, but sometimes it does, uh, it does pop off. You just want to make sure you've got that reinstalled and you've got your subwoofer plugged in through the middle of that. 
then we can go ahead and put our subwoofer in. And finally screw the subwoofer into place. Might take a little bit of uh, wiggling the woofer around for you to find the holes to line up. All right, we've got our subwoofer screwed down. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off really quick. Now we're going to take our top basket, flip it upside down, and find where the ribbon cable used to be attached to. Use that to orient ourselves, and then we can set that down. And if you push down on it and sort of twist it back and forth, you should be able to feel it settle into the position that it was in before. Then we can take our screws for the top basket and put all those back in. Okay, we've got all of our screws put into the top basket. Before we forget, let's go ahead and push this ribbon cable back up into the top basket here so it doesn't rattle around when the subwoofer is moving. All right. Then let's go ahead and pull our mesh cover up just a little bit, just enough to start covering the screws for the top basket so we can take our screw covers here and use the mesh to sort of hold those in place while we put them all in before we pull the mesh up. All right. With those all in, we can go ahead and pull our mesh up and check that those all stayed in place, which it feels like they did. Good. All right, let's get the logic board put in here now. The trick to getting this ribbon cable connected here is to first put it into the connector at a 45 degree angle and then make it flat with the connector and then you can lock it into place. Go ahead and put that in. Then we can take our plastic mid frame and our draw strings. And what we're going to do is the draw strings will wrap around the out edge of this mid frame and then they will feed in through the hole and then wrap around these posts. What I do is I just get them fished through the hole first. Just get them pulled through that hole on the other side. We've got both of those we've got both of those pulled through the hole that you can see here now we need to wrap them around this so you can see there's a bit of a natural direction that the drawstrings want to go 
So that's the way that you'll want to make sure you wrap these. Got that drawstring in place and wrapped around. Feed this mesh edge into that plastic lip around this mid frame here. And we may need to pull this a little tighter and then continue to feed this in here. And then sometimes what helps is to put a couple of screws into this frame, just a little, so you can hold it in place and more easily get that mesh in here. So we're just gonna keep pulling this mesh up as we feed it more and more into our plastic frame piece here. And once we've gotten that in there the way that we want. We'll go ahead and tighten those first two screws. And of course we can go ahead and take the rest of our screws for this and put those in. And then for the drawstrings here, we we'll want to find the direction that they naturally want to go. Which appears to be this way. So we'll take one of our drawstring screws here. And we are going to start threading that in. And then we can go two times around the screw with this drawstring first. And then we can tighten this screw down. Be careful not to tighten these screws for the drawstring too much because this plastic really easily strips. Go ahead and take our other drawstring screw. Thread that into place a little bit. Get our drawstring and wrap that around twice. And we can tighten that down. Now we can proceed with wrapping our drawstring around the posts. drawstring secured. We can take our top display 
get this plugged back in. Then we can set that down. Put our last four screws back in. Since we've been touching these, I'm going to wipe these off really quick before I put that back on. All right, and then we're going to use the plus and minus buttons to sort of line this up the best way that we can. gently push this down all right let's go ahead and plug this in and see if our work was successful factory reset that and as we can see we've now got power going to our home pod i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it helped you in some way if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments Me? your home pod is about to reset keep pressing until you hear three beeps and i hope you have a good one